In the flickering gaslight of Victorian London, an enigma emerged whose identity remains shrouded in mystery to this day, Jack the Ripper. As we delve into this chilling narrative, it's crucial to understand the backdrop against which these horrific events unfolded. The year was 1888, and London's East End was a maze of squalor, bursting with the impoverished and desperate. Whitechapel, the heart of darkness, became the stage for a series of grisly murders that gripped the city with fear and fascination. The year 1888 would forever be etched into the annals of criminal history, marked by a series of sinister events that unfolded under the cloak of London's dense fog. The East End, already a canvas of human struggle, was stalked by a predator who hunted in the shadows. This chapter delves deeper into the gruesome details and the haunting atmosphere of that fateful autumn. The first strike, Marianne Nichols. In the early hours of August 31st, the streets of Whitechapel were eerily quiet. The first victim, Marianne Nichols, was found on Bucks Row. Her throat was cut twice and her abdomen horrifically mutilated with such precision that it suggested a sinister expertise. The brutality of the attack shook the community, but little did they know it was just the beginning. Echoes in the Alley, Annie Chapman. Just over a week later on September 8th, Annie Chapman met a fate similar to Nichols. Discovered in the backyard of 29 Hanbury Street, her injuries were grotesque, her throat slashed and her abdomen opened with the same cruel precision. Chapman's murder added layers to the growing fear, indicating that a serial menace was at large, each strike more daring than the last. Double event, the night of September 30th. The terror reached its peak on the night of September 30th, with two murders just an hour apart, an audacious display of the killer's growing boldness. Elizabeth Stride's body was found in Dutfield's yard, her demise marked by a single cut to the throat, suggesting an interruption during the act. Merely an hour later, Catherine Eddowes was found in Mitre Square, not only killed but horrifically mutilated in a manner that mirrored the previous victims, signaling that the Ripper was escalating his violent expression. The final horror, Mary Jane Kelly. Mary Jane Kelly's murder on November 9th inside her room at 13 Miller's Court marked the apogee of the Ripper's brutality. The scene was unlike any other. Kelly's body was not just mutilated but eviscerated, with her organs placed around the room with ghastly precision. This murder was deeply personal and chillingly intimate, suggesting that Jack the Ripper was not merely killing but relishing his control over life and death. Throughout these dark months, the streets of Whitechapel became a psychological battleground. The community lived in a state of paranoia, with every shadow potentially concealing the city's most feared figure. The police patrols intensified, and vigilance committees sprang up. Yet Jack the Ripper moved through London's East End like a ghost, his identity as elusive as the motives behind his terrifying spree. As the terror in Whitechapel reached its zenith, Scotland Yard found itself mired in a web of theories and potential suspects. The enigma of Jack the Ripper provoked a frantic search through London's foggy underbelly, drawing into question the identities of numerous individuals, each cloaked in their own shroud of mystery. This chapter explores the most prominent figures suspected of being the elusive Ripper, highlighting the complexity and desperation of the investigation. Montague John Druitt, the educated suspect. Montague John Druitt, a barrister and schoolteacher with a reportedly unstable mind, was one of the first to be suspected. His body was found drowned in the Thames shortly after the last murder, leading to speculation about his guilt. Authorities wondered if his own demise was an act of remorse or merely a coincidence. Druitt's refined education and surgical precision matched the profile constructed by investigators, making him a figure of intrigue in this grim gallery. Aaron Kosminski, the mysterious migrant. Another suspect, Aaron Kosminski, was a Polish barber living in the heart of Whitechapel. Known for his erratic behavior and admissions to asylums, Kosminski was believed to harbor a deep-seated hatred for women, potentially motivating the gruesome nature of the murders. His proximity to the crime scenes and his mental instability painted him as a viable suspect, though conclusive evidence never surfaced. Francis Tumblety, the charismatic charlatan. Francis Tumblety, an Irish-American quack doctor, boasted a collection of utery and flaunted his misogyny, drawing the police's attention. His movements across the Atlantic and his sudden flight from London after the murders made him a suspect of interest. Tumblety's wealth enabled him to elude the authorities for years, adding an international twist to the pursuit. James Kelly, the asylum escapee. James Kelly, 
a name less known but equally fascinating, escaped from an asylum in 1888. His history of violence and his disappearance during the time of the murders threw him into the pool of suspects. Kelly would later turn himself back into the asylum, with his whereabouts during the murders remaining a compelling mystery. The theories about Jack the Ripper's identity are as varied as they are numerous, each suspect offering a glimpse into the darker facets of human nature. As the investigation trudged through a fog thicker than that enveloping London's streets, the list of potential culprits only grew, weaving a tapestry of suspicion that enveloped the city. Amidst this gallery of shadows, the true identity of Jack the Ripper remained as elusive as ever, a phantom lurking just beyond the reach of the law's grasp. The legacy of Jack the Ripper extends beyond the immediate horror of his crimes, profoundly impacting media coverage and criminal investigations. Newspapers sensationalized the murders, igniting a media frenzy that set the stage for modern crime reporting and sparked public debates on social justice and police efficacy. These events also highlighted deficiencies in law enforcement techniques, accelerating advances in forensic science and criminal profiling that would shape future police work. Over a century later, the mystery of Jack the Ripper's identity continues to captivate scholars and the public alike. Theories abound, fueled by evolving forensic methods and an enduring fascination with the unsolved. This persistent intrigue reflects a deep human interest in the dark corners of the psyche and the complexities of criminal minds. Jack the Ripper's story, marked by its enduring mystery and impact on society, remains a grim reminder of the dark potential within humanity and a symbol of the perpetual allure of unsolved mysteries. If you enjoyed unraveling the dark mysteries of Jack the Ripper with us, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more deep dives into history's most intriguing stories. Have your own theories about the Ripper's identity. Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you think.